Hello Summers and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about 10 items that need to be nerfed or removed. For one reason or another, these items are offering a little bit too much and they seriously need to be toned back before the start of the season. But before we get into that, today's question of the day is, what role are you going to main for season 11? With the changes that we got on 10.25, things look like they're starting to balance out. Or at least we're getting a little bit closer to that. So with power at least being comparable between roles, will you be sticking to what you know or get a fresh start with something new? Let us know in the comments down below. With the launch of preseason, there are many champions and more broadly classes that stood above the competition. This was, of course, due to the new items that were introduced. Initially going into things, everyone assumed the assassins would be OP, and while burst damage has definitely been extremely high, it's not like they were the only ones that were thriving. Tanks, which everybody thought was going to be dead in the preseason, have been massively dominant, being able to solo carries and taking no damage thanks to how overtuned their item choices are. Mages have been thriving as well, with the new item paths giving them a way to deal with threats of all types. On the flip side of that coin, ADCs have been doing completely abysmal, while most supports have been kind of mad. Though this is mostly due to how bad ADC champs have been performing. So, Riot's initial response was to reel the items in, bringing in the power on 10.24. However, the changes were clearly too light, with tanks and assassins still completely dominating the game from the solo lanes, with mages being right behind them. With the midway point of the preseason approaching, we need to see some changes badly. Sure, the buffs to the ADC items this patch helped quite a bit, but we still think that Riot needs to either nerf, minorly rework, or just remove some of these items from the game for the sake of a healthy gameplay. While burst as a whole has been too high, the biggest offenders have been AP assassins, particularly Fizz and Echo. Night Harvester just provides way too much for their bursty hit and run playstyles. The added damage synergizes so well with Lichbane, and since Fizz and Echo already both build that, the combo is insanely broken. In fact, once they have Night Harvester, Lichbane, and Rabidons, they can almost always one-shot squishy targets without even having to ultimate. On top of the damage, it also gives movement speed, which allows these champions to go in, burst on their opponents, and then quickly retreat out before they can be punished. And it's not like Echo or Fizz are the only abusers of this item. Let's look at another champion, like Rumble. In theory, you'd think that Rumble, who previously opted for Lianjus for the damage over time effect, would opt for Riftmaker, since its ramping damage seems to be more in line with this playstyle. But with how much free damage is offered up front, Night Harvester is just a better item, adding a huge burst to both damage and speed anytime that he wants to chase down an opponent. And since the item has a per champion cooldown, it can potentially add hundreds of damage to a well-placed ult in a teamfight. All in all, it's a fun item, but it offers way too much for a single item slot. I like to see them either increase the cooldown, make it so you can't proc it more than every 5 seconds, or significantly lower the damage that it does. The problem with an item like Divine Sunderer is that it's not built on too many champions, but the ones that do build it abuse everything it has to offer extremely well. Take Ezreal for example. Ezreal is generally played in a poke-heavy playstyle, relying on his Q much more than his auto attacks. As a result, the attack speed mythic passive of Trinity Force is largely wasted. Now let's go ahead and compare that to Divine Sunderer. The double pen passive goes perfectly well with Ezreal's kit, since his kit is a pretty nice mix of both damage types. On top of that, Ezreal has always been sort of struggling with bringing down tanks, but thanks to Divine Sunderer's Spellblade effect doing percentage of the enemy's HP, it helps him get over that weakness. Hecarim, Yorick, and Camille are all some of the other offenders of using this item very well, but the problem is that there aren't many other champions out there that can. So with it being relatively underbuilt, it's not too much of a surprise that the item isn't being called out for being OP just yet. Despite being hotfixed less than a week after the preseason begun, Sunfire Aegis is still a hot topic. It gives tanks HP, armor, MR, and ability haste, all the while serving as the best damage item for the beefy boys. It'd be nice if tanks had to make some choice, like pick two of survivability, utility, and damage, as opposed to the currently all of the above selection where we have with this item. Not much is going to change with the microscopic nerf that it just received. Instead of lowering the HP provided by a measly 100 and decreasing the damage it deals to monsters, how about we see this item not give tanks the ability to solo down an ADC in the middle of the teamfight, all the while shrugging off damage from the supposed damage dealers from the enemy team. Like I said before, a damage item should exist for tanks, but it shouldn't come with so much as this one does. At least remove the CDR and a bit of the wave clear power. Actually, before we go on, I just want to take a moment to mention that we have a new channel dedicated to Wild Rift. Make sure to check it out so you can be up to date on the mobile version of the game that we know and sometimes love. Anyway, on with the show. Similar to Divine Senderer, Frostfire Gauntlet falls into the category of OP but not used by many champs. In fact, it's rare to see this item at all, but due to the fact that it provides the same stickiness that Frozen Mallet used to give while also being a huge chunk of tankiness, it is actually the better item twist on a few champions. But the issue is most tanks already have pretty good sticking power since their kit are usually full packed with CC for disrupting the enemy backline, or engaging. So while Gauntlet is largely overlooked by those in its intended class, what makes it so toxic is the potential to be abused by bruisers that can use the item to be too tanky to kill but impossible to run from. The best example of this is Shivana. Overall, she has a 49% win rate, but when building Frostfire Gauntlet, the number shoots up to a freaking whopping 56%. 
Since she already has a lot of base HP and damage, the extra resist from the sticking power of Frostfire makes it a one-stop shop, giving Shift a huge one-power item spike. I know it was just nerfed this patch, but the decrease in size of the slow field doesn't really change the functionality of the item. In my opinion, it just seems unhealthy for the game to have an item that is really strong on a select few champions, but completely useless outside of them. I think that this item needs a pretty big overhaul, or to be removed and replaced by a new mythic altogether. As we've already been over up until this patch, marksmen haven't had it so easy. Most of them have been rolled over from champions and other roles, but the few that have thrived are the ones that can build lethality early game, and then transition into a crit by purchasing the collector. And it's not just the bot lane carries, junglers and top laners abuse it as well. The thing about this item is that the passive isn't generally that great. Sure, the execute will definitely pick up a kill here and there, but a lot of the time, it's a target that would have been dead anyway. No, what makes the collector so good is how perfect the stats are for so many different AD champions. Comparing it to Yuma's Ghostblade, you're trading out 5 AD and 6 Lethality for 20% crit chance. You're losing a tiny fraction of your damage per auto, but 1 in 5 hits will now crit. It also helps swap over from a crit build, which means that you're going to have better scaling than if you had just decided to stack Lethality. The combination of Lethality and crit in one item just seems like a little bit much, especially when you're considering that champs that really use the stats like Jin, Draven, and MF already snowball so heavily as is. The Execute passive is definitely a cool idea for the item, but that in conjunction with its ridiculously strong stats make it seem almost like something you'd see in a featured game mode, rather than live on Summoner's Rift. Enchanters thrive in lower damage, slower paced fights, where the constant heals and shields can swing a fight in a team's favor. Moonstone Renewer works with this playstyle perfectly, heavily rewarding support players that are able to stay in combat with enemy champions. On 10.24, it was completely overtuned with outrageous healing and long fights. This patch, it was adjusted, seeing that healing toned down a bit, but Riot has already stated that their goal is to bring down burst damage. This will result in even longer fights, meaning Musum Renewer will often remain an extremely impactful item, and it'll pretty much always be the best choice on most enchanters without any consideration from any other mythics. While it may not need nerfs immediately, if burst damage is nerfed and the fights become slower, it will definitely need some power pull from the constant flow of heals. When it comes to Bruiser Mythics, the general idea is Stratebreaker for mobility and sticking to targets, Trinity Force for damage, and Gore Drinker for healing and extended fights. The thing is, Stratebreaker does what it's supposed to do. It gives Bruisers and Juggernauts, especially in mobile ones like Set and Udyr, a way to stick to their targets. But when we look at the other two options, Gore Drinker's damage is comparable to Trinity Forces in most cases, and in some, the haste of Mythic passive grants makes it the better option. And all of that is before we consider the absolutely insane healing the active can give. This can be even made more powerful once you finish Ravenous Hydra, and once you do, the Gore Drinker active in a teamfight will literally heal anyone from near death to almost full HP. With the damage trade-off being so negligible and the healing on Gore Drinker being so strong, there's rarely a reason to even consider Trinity Force on a lot of top laners that would otherwise maybe buy it. I don't think that this is a case where drastic measures need to be taken, simply decrease the healing by a bit or remove the cooldown being lowered by ability haste, and Gore Drinker will be more of an option that you can get and less of a better all-the-time item. Before the preseason, Ravenous Hydra had its niche. It was the item that you build when you wanted pushing power and sustain on bruisers in the top lane. Now with all the preseason makeover, its lifesteal has been changed to Omnivamp, and all damage, including abilities and items, can activate it. It's like Riot took the best parts of Ravenous Hydra and Death Stance and threw them together with some adjustments just to make a god tier item. And since you build Gore Drinker on most of the champs that built this item, it's almost like Tiamat and Hydra have never had their actives removed. Hydra is so strong that it's one of the few legendary items that gets built before the mythic in some champion builds, such as with Fiora. You can even make the argument that it may be more important to the full build of the mythic itself due to the insane amount of healing that the Omnivamp gives. It's not just top laners that are abusing it. Ravenous Hydra can be built on ranged champions now, as we have shown in our recent Sleeper OP video, where we talked about how strong Ravenous Hydra is on Kindred. So all in all, Hydra is something that's good for the game, we just need to see the hedge trimmed down a little bit. Maybe remove the ability haste and even some lower damage, and I think that would be in a pretty good spot. While every other item on the list is a completed item, we're including stopwatch because it deters or sometimes even completely erases the possibility of aggressive plays from being made. And when you're playing Assassin or an aggressive early game ADC like Trisana, you're constantly looking for a slip up so you can go for that all in. Exploiting people's weakness and mistakes is a part of League's gameplay, and personally, I think a get out of jail free card like stopwatch isn't very healthy for the game. Early game defensive options like Seeker's Arm Guard and Hex Drinker cost a fair amount of money, but provide a bit of safety. Stopwatch costs around half the gold and all but guarantees that you don't die if you use it correctly, which will pretty much deter all in attempts by most people. It's just kind of a boring item to have in the game, and I think the stasis effect should be locked behind a completed item like it used to be. When you stop to think about it, Gensu's Rage Blade has been an unhealthy item for quite some time, and it's already been nerfed and or reworked a couple of times now. The issue is that almost all champions that build Ginsu's end up being nerfed at some point due to their synergy with the item. Kai'Sa, Master Yi, and Kog'Maw are just some of the champions that thrived in their prime thanks to this item. 
Once they picked it up, Power Spike was immense and their DPS completely melts tanks and squishy targets alike. So, here's my proposal for this item. Since the Double Strike passive seems to be somewhat making it an overbearing item, maybe the focus should be on converting crit damage into on-hit damage. And that damage should be changed back to magic damage, giving marksmen a way to swap their damage type to help bring down armor stacking tanks. If that doesn't work out, maybe just consider getting rid of it altogether. That way the champs that rely on it can be balanced without having to worry about that double hit passive. And that is all I have to talk about for these 10 items that need to be nerfed or removed. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to let us know what role you'll be maining for Season 11. We really love to hear what you guys say, and I can't wait to see you all back in the next video. But until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.